Uh, greetings, fellow researchers. Uh, this short little video will help you write the fifth and final chapter of your research uh, paper. Uh, in this section, or in this chapter, excuse me, there'll be the following sections, and we'll be taking a closer look at uh, each one of these. Uh, the first section in uh, this final chapter is where you just very briefly review the findings from your paper. And just for our purposes, it needn't be more than just a paragraph. And in it, you will just remind the reader that the, um, of the important things that you found. And those, um, this actually will be a short little summary of your findings from chapter four. And just go ahead and be brief. And again, this paragraph just sets an immediate context for what it is you're uh, readers will see over the next few uh, pages. Uh, one of the most important parts of this chapter is to go ahead and show a continuity between what you've uh, done before and uh, the findings that you've come up with. And the best place to start with that is to go back to the literature. So in the literature review, what you did was you took a look at the kinds of things that other authors had found, that the researchers had found, and you brought those to the attention of the reader. Now you're going to go back and you're going to connect uh, for our purposes, very briefly, you're going to go ahead and connect uh, what you found uh, to what the researchers had found in their in their efforts. Um, is what you found does it connect? Does it uh, uh, with what other researchers have found, or did you what you found is different from what those researchers had found? So go ahead and go back and cite some of the significant uh, researchers, some of the significant literature, and then go ahead and say, yes, this is, I found was consistent with that or was different than what the researchers had suggested I'd find. Uh, the next section is probably the most important section for our, um, our study, and that's the implications for the field. This is the so what of the study. This is actually why you did your study in the first place, because you wanted to affect some kind of change or bring to light something that was going on in the field. Uh, so this is where you editorialize. This is where you say, because of what I found, this should change. This should be different. We should pay more attention to this. This is policy that should be taken a look at. This is policy that should be changed. And again, you're quite free, as long as you base it in the research, as long as you base it in your findings, to come up with um, uh, suggestions for what should be different because of your work. Uh, obviously, all research is limited by any number of things, uh, limited time, uh, you couldn't get to all the individuals that you would like to in order to be able to do a more comprehensive study. Uh, there was a narrow group of people that you took a look at. So in this section, the limitations of the study, you describe that, what it was that limited you from coming up with a more comprehensive and complete study. Uh, the next section for further study is you talk about what kinds of things um, future researchers might want to take a look at. Um, based on what you've taken a look at, um, uh, what what kinds of things might be unclear or would need further review or what kinds of questions you came up with that further researchers might want to take a look at. So uh, this is the final section of this chapter. Um, so you would go ahead and just kind of, this is the, this is your send off. This is um, for anybody who's reading your work, hopefully would um, have some kind of interest or might find some kind of interest in continuing your efforts. And this is a, a way where you would direct their work. Um, just f finally, just some uh, general kind of instructions for writing the paper in general and as you go back and edit your work, um, re reminder of, uh, of a few things. Uh, first, make sure that you write in a, um, in a non-discriminating style, that you don't unknowingly uh, demean a group or uh, continue on a particular kind of stereotype. Our text has a uh, couple um, uh, suggestions, just want to highlight those, um, but m many of them have to do with um, with gender-neutral language. It's very easy to miss that because uh, uh, gender-specific language is so much a part of our, our vocabulary. So instead of man and mankind, we would use humans or humankind. Uh, one of the easiest way to avoid the pronoun his or her is to um, change the antecedent of that plural of that pronoun to a plural. So if you were to say, instead of saying uh, a child should um, uh, be given a safe environment so that his or her education could be uh, fully realized, you would say children should have their educational experience uh, fully enriched so that they 
I'd be fully able to re be fully able to reach their potential. So you, all you have to do is go back to the antecedent of the pronoun, make it plural, and then you can use they or there. Um, so again, it's just I'll just go through a couple of these sides, just let you take a look at them. Again, these are from our text, giving you an example of uh, how to make sure that you enjoy uh, avoid gender specific language. Uh, especially with uh, certain kinds of groups, we want to make sure that uh, we're sensitive to the changes in language that have um, honored these uh, honored these groups of folks. Uh, in our uh, text, we uh, suggest that we use the, uh, the governmental major categories. There are six that you will see, and um, we would uh, we will. Uh, use those six categories as basic kind of categorical descriptors of, of different kinds of ethnic groups. As we've said before, um, this is a scholarly work, so write in uh, crisp scholarly language. Make sure that you use scholarly terms for your research. Um, all that, all those, uh, all these kinds of things that you can do would help to um, give weight to the study of the kind of language that you choose is academic language and is the language of the field. Uh, and again, um, avoid first person, um, avoid the word, word I. Uh, the standard way of avoiding that is to use uh, this researcher found. Um, it's just, again, a convention that um, just takes away from a, an overly uh, a personalized way of, look, of, of presenting the material. And again, as we've said before, when you're coming up against, um, or when you're doing your qualitative section, make sure you use rich, thick description because we want that to be a very, um, a very substantive part of your work. And the best way to do that is to be a very uh, descriptive kind of writer. Um, again, these are the, uh, the uh, basic instructions for Chapter 5. Uh, again, feel free to email me if you have any questions. and. Um, uh, the best of luck to you as you continue your work.